At Petco Park in San Diego, the New York Mets play the San Diego Padres. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Jeep and the unique brand of freedom you'll only find in the full line of Jeep vehicles. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. By the State Farm agent of the game, John Garfinkel of Brooklyn. Contact John at JohnGarfinkel.com. And by the New York State Health Department, smoking is an addiction. For help quitting, talk with your health care provider. San Diego, California, home of long freeways. Traffic moves a little better here than it does up in L.A., but there's lots to do. Go out on the water, beautiful sailing vessel, lots of great golf. If you like to hit the links, surfing. Ronnie was doing that today. I don't know if he did the 360, but it looked pretty good out there. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to San Diego. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling with you tonight as the Mets play game three of their four-game series against the Padres. The Mets have won their first two in this series. Last night, 6-5, to five, and something we haven't said that much this year, the Mets' defense was really a big part of the win. I mean, no one happier than me to talk about the defense, and last night it was bookended. In the first, Jay Bruce, we haven't seen him throw out many runners at home. Well, he did in the first to save Seth Lugo and to get through that inning. A brilliant one-hop throw, and even better tag by Darno, but in the ninth inning Addison Reed did not have his best stuff so he needed the defense to come through TJ Rivera the best play he's ever made in a Met uniform coming all the way from second base with that dive and then Cabrera could he play third did he have enough arm to make that big throw well of course he did and when you see defense like that that usually ends up in a Mets win like he did last night and for Cabrera only his third career start at third base he'll be there again tonight as the Mets send Steven Matz to the mound Matz looking to get things turned around after three straight not so good starts. Well he's going to have to get off to a better start in those last three starts he's given up six runs and ten hits he's gotten off to such a slow start it's really ruined any performance he could have later in the game so a quick start for Matz is needed. Last time the Mets saw Jolice Chassin they knocked him out in the first inning at City Field but he's been really good lately. He really has his sinker is back he's throwing it to both sides of the plate to go along with that good slider he's always been bad against the Mets they hope that continues. So the Mets try and keep it rolling. They've won six of seven, eight and four since the All-Star break. Mets and Padres in San Diego. All the action coming your way tonight right here on SNY.
Why is brought to you by Empire City Casino. Real people, real money, real deal. You could be the next big winner. By Pearl Vision. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. And by Budweiser, America's other national pastime. This Bud's for you. Be at City Field Friday, August 4th for Free Shirt Friday when the Mets take on the Dodgers at 7.10 p.m. All fans in attendance will receive a Jacob deGrom rec replica jersey courtesy of Geico. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash Free Shirt Fridays. Cold Heart Facts brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. Mets and Padres have played five games. Padres won two out of three at City Field in May. Yohannes Cespedes wasn't there for that series. He made his uh, statement in the first two of this series. Michael Conforto had a leadoff home run against Jalice Chassin in New York. See what he can do against Chassin tonight. Mets and the Padres, Petco Park. First pitch is coming right up. assignment and as such here is the Geico Mets starting lineup you had assessment this came out last night with a little fatigue in his quad but he's right back in there tonight Rene Rivera gets the first start of this series against his former team Wilmer Flores a start at second base TJ Rivera's elbow is acting up on him and so Flores in there against the right hander and that right hander is the veteran Julius Chassin. Well you see his numbers the Toyota numbers with a winning record this year for a team mired in fourth place. But um, in July he's three and oh ZRA is in the twos but he's had eight games against the Mets seven starts ERA is over six. Blash gets a start in left field today Margot and Renfro in center and right and then in the infield Alan Cordoba was great last night Spangenberg at second base. Will Myers of course at first and it seems like they're alternating the catchers Luis Torrens gets to start today. Let's have a blash. Oh there you go. Nice. First pitch of the night from Chessine Conforto pops one up along the left field line a long run for Blash into foul territory sliding and he made the catch. Oh he had a blash right off the bat. 
first batter of the game. Blash almost overslid it, reached back and made the play on Conforto for the first down of the night, and what a play. I mean, with these shifts, this is the only way to make this play. The problem was the ball was still about 30 feet in the air when he slid, and luckily he stopped right when the ball landed. And when he caught it, had a chance to be fair. That was, landed that on was, the line. That was a fair ball. So one exciting pitch and one out. And now as Dribble Cabrera will step in against Jolice Chassin. So it's already gone better for Chassin than it did the last time he faced the Mets when he gave up seven runs in two thirds of an inning with Conforto starting the matter with a home run. Two forty pitches in those two thirds of an inning. Blash is a very tall player from the Virgin Islands. The slide almost came to a complete stop by the time he made that play. And Chassin is like, well, I've never seen him make that play before. Amazing. Slid all the way from St. Thomas to St. Croix. <laughs> one and one to Cabrera, who's four for eight in this series with a pair of doubles. And Chassin misses away. Two balls and a strike. Cabrera playing his fourth game at third base. He made the game ending play last night from deep behind the bag to get Addison Reed through the ninth in a one run game. And the fastball at his feet, and it's three and one. You end Cespedes waiting on deck. Three one coming. And Cabrera lunging for it, pops it up. The shortstop Cordoba calling. And that's the second out. So two up and two set aside by Chassin. And now Cespedes, who had himself quite an active night last night, he homered his first time up, breaking an 87 at bat home run drought. He later had an RBI double. And then in the seventh, a check swing opposite field triple that turned into a little league home run. He slid into third, popped up, ran home. Throw was there before him, but he uh, the ball was dislodged from the glove of the catcher Sanchez, and he was able to score. Then was taken out of the game at that point. Remember, Will Myers, because of the shift, was the one that made that throw home. So last night we were trying to figure out when Cespedes was taken out of the game, whether it was because of injury or because yeah. Terry wanted to double switch. I asked Terry about it today. He said he had had no intention of double switching until Cespedes got hurt and needed to take him out as a precaution. And the ancillary benefit was that he did get two innings out of Paul Seawall, but that was not his intention. Wow. Cespedes got called for swinging at that slider out of the strike zone, and now it's 0 and 2. Jay Bruce would be next. 29 year old Julius Chassin scratched last night. Back in there tonight. He's gotten his first two hitters out. He had a little bit of a back problem coming out of his last start against the Giants last Thursday, and that's why they pushed him back a day. And brought up Kyle Lloyd to make the start last night. And Cespedes turns away, and it's two and two. Chassin is already trying to establish that inside part of the plate to Cespedes so he can get him out with that fastball or slider away. 2 2 coming. In the air to right field. Playing deep was Renfro. He comes hurrying in, dives, and he makes the catch. What a tremendous defensive inning for the San Diego Padres outfield. First flash and now Renfro making the diving play to take a base hit away from Cespedes and get Chassin through a 1 2 3 opening inning. Mets defense last night. Early on, it's the Padres defense. Renfro getting that glove down and taking a hit away from Cespedes. He was playing almost back on the warning track. Had a long way to come. Steven Matz takes the map when we come back.
defense the Padres defense wasn't very good last night but this was sweet. Jabari Blash with the slide Hunter Renfro with the dive. We've seen Renfro make a couple of good catches one going away over his head in the first game of the series and then this one to end that first inning. Steven Matz dealing to Jose Pirella up and away for his first pitch for ball one. The truck noise for the Land Rover. Land Rover numbers for Steven Matz have not been good in his last three starts. Hasn't been able really to establish any of his pitches to fastball or curveball. One game it was the slider that he tried to establish. Well, he had that dreadful outing against the Rockies where he gave up seven runs and nine hits in an inning plus. He was a little better his last time against the A's. Three runs over five innings. Two and one to Perella, who had an 11 game hitting streak stopped last night, and he fouls off the curveball two and two. My personal opinion, and it means nothing, is that Stephen Matz throws way too hard to be throwing two and zero oh and two and one changeups to the first hitter of the game. Just establish that fastball. It's too good. And the fastball is up and in for a full count. And Walmart go hitting second in the order. Then Will Myers for the Padres. Padres have the lowest team batting average and the fewest runs scored in the National League, but they have been a formidable offense in the first two games of this series. That's taken the other way, and Perella has a leadoff hit. Ten hits on Monday night, eight hits last night, and a base hit to start this night. Have you been impressed uh, with Perella as much as I have? I think he's a fine player. He's played the outfield a couple of games. He's playing second base tonight. That's a pitcher's pitch, and he went to right field. There's the uh, lineup as uh, Jabari Blash gets his first start of the series. As the Mets throw a left-hander, only one left-handed bat in the lineup. That's Spangenberg. Remember that Perella was also the guy who backed up the play when Myers threw the ball away. He came in from left field to field that ball just behind third base and almost throw out Cespedes at the plate. He did throw him out. It's just Sanchez couldn't hold on to the ball. So, but I mean, how many left fielders make that play? Well, it's a hustling young player. It's good to see. Margot, the center fielder, having a fine series. Five for eight in the first two games. Matz has trouble holding runners. Padres are not a big base stealing team. Perella has three this year. And for the second straight hitter, Stevens behind 2 0. Oh. When Steven was at his best when he first came off the DL, he pitched a contact, if you guys remember that. When you get roughed up a little bit, sometimes you start to pitch away from contact, and that's not his strength. He's going to have to go right at hitters. His last start against the A's, he gave up three straight hits to start the game, but then settled in and pitched pretty well. Tired a bit in the fifth and then was taken out for a pinch hitter with the Mets down by a run. Two and one to Margot. Well, those are uh, telling numbers right there in his career. Like gangbusters, those first 14. Well, last year he battled elbow issues. Everybody knows that. He had the bone spur. But the last start that he made before he got shut down last year was against San Diego. And he took a no hitter into the eighth inning. It's the only time he's faced the Padres before tonight. That's driven to deep center field. Conforto back to the warning track at the wall. It's out of here. Manuel Margot with a 2 1 homer, his sixth of the year. And the Padres jump in front early 2 0. Well, the Padres came out meaning business on the defensive end in the top of the first. And they're meaning a little business here in the bottom of the first with their offense. A base hit to right field and a ball squared up by Margot. Line drive out of center field. What a first inning for the Padre outfield. Two corner guys with the great catches, and the center field hits one over the fence. And so Matt's in an early hole. Ninth home run Stevens allowed in just 44 and a third innings this year. Last four games, he's given up six runs, sorry, eight runs, and 12 hits in the first inning. Well, Myers takes a fastball for a strike. Myers 0 for 6 in this series. The 
And the fastball in for a strike, nothing and two. You very rarely see a ball hit out to center field here. It's just as so far here, and Margot made it look easy. Got some very young players getting a lot of playing time right now for the Padres. Margot just 22 years old. Strike three called, and Matz throws the slider to get his first out. Myers striking out for the 127th time, the most in the National League. Defensively for the Mets, Conforto's back in center field. Granderson on the bench, flanked by Cespedes and Bruce. Cabrera with that great throw to end the game last night. Reyes Flores and due to TJ Rivera on the bench and Renee Rivera the pitching whisperer behind the plate. Might need to whisper a little louder. <laughs> Here's Hunter Renfro who's had himself quite a series and he drives this one to the gap in right center field. And that ball is down and up over the wall for a ground rule double. So Renfro who's homered three times in this series bounces one over the fence for his 21st double of the year. So Renfro wasting no time first pitch swinging and driving one to the opposite gap. I mean it's obvious he's having a good series but we also had a lot of words of compliment about Mr. Renfro when he played at City Field. This kid has a chance to be a Goldschmidt kind of player. He has con uh, he has power to all fields. You see the contact he made there and the ball in the middle of the plate might have beat him just a bit still one hopped it over the wall. So a single a homer and a double first four batters against Mats and here's Jabari Blash and he takes a fastball strike. Blash starting for the first time in the series and the 19th time this year he was in the minor leagues for a couple of months at 18 home runs and 60 games at El Paso. And now three home runs in his first 64 at bats in the big league. Lash barely missed winning the game on Monday night. Mets were up by two runs. Blash came up with two men on base and carved one down the right field line that barely missed hitting the foul pole. I mean, it missed by inches. It's been tough for Addison Reed the last two nights. Renfro at second and one out, and Blash takes it high. Well, that was an historically bad start against the Rockies. A little better against Oakland, but still a lot of work to be done. Taken out after only 83 pitches in those five innings against Oakland. Last three starts, an ERA over 13. And the breaking ball line off the glove of Reyes and into center field. Renfro digs for third. Conforto charges it, and the Padres have runners at the corners. It was hit like a bullet but it certainly looked like a ball Jose was going to catch but it went off his glove. Well this ball was squared up and hit 100 miles an hour and the ball is is a play that you have to make as the shortstop. I know it's hit so hard but the ball just eluded one step more for Reyes would have made that a much easier play. Well they're going to score the base hit for Blash based on the uh, how hard it was hit but I can guarantee you that same ball hit in New York is an error. Yeah it's a the exit velo a little bit of hometown scoring kind of is hit, what yeah. it is. Well. So Dan Worth and out to the mound for a first inning visit to Mats has given up hits to four of the first five batters. Now we get the only lefty in the lineup Corey Spangenberg. Matz has given some rips up in this first inning, hasn't he? Well, four hits and all have been smoked. Spangenberg one for seven in this series, hitting 224 against lefties. And Matz in need of a double play ball. And Spangenberg takes a little bit high, ball one. Phil Cuzzy is the home plate umpire tonight. A lot of signs there from Hoffman to the batter Spangenberg. And a knee high strike one and one. Phil mm -hmm. Cousy behind the plate. 
Got a Long Island pitcher and a Long Island first base umpire, Vic Carapaza. Mark Ripperger and Tom mm -hmm. Howie and the crew chief over at third after taking one hard off the mask last night. Tom's okay. Spangenberg hits one down to third. Cabrera coming home. And Rivera puts on the tag on Renfro for the second out. Don't know if Cabrera would have had time to turn two had he tried to go to second. But he made sure to get the lead man for the second out. You know, Spangenberg's got a lot of speed, so I think he made the right play. The wrong play is by Renfro. Renfro is going on contact, okay? So as soon as it hits, he leaves. But as soon as he sees Cabrera make the play, as soon as Rivera has the ball, he needs to get in a rundown. Why? The longer he gets in a rundown, you have a chance to move your runners up to second and third. Blash and Spangenberg, because he just made the simplest of outs, uh, his runners couldn't move up. So now two on runners at first and second with two down and here is Alan Cordoba the shortstop. Cordoba hit a two run homer last night. Against Seth Lugo and he takes curveball for a strike. Lugo gave up two home runs in that second inning last night. And then settled in and did not allow another earned run. The shock was that he gave up a home run to Renfro on a curveball. First time in the big leagues that Seth had allowed a home run on the curve, and uh, Anthony DeComo asked him about it today. He said it's the second time in his life he's ever given up a home run on a curveball. The first one in the minor leagues to Hunter Renfro. No way. Yeah. Wow. So somebody's got a line on Seth's curveball, even if nobody else does. I think I gave up a hundred uh, home runs on curveballs, so I can't remember all the guys. <laughs> Well, Seth got himself his fifth win last night. Mets have now won 13 of the last 15 when he started for them. Got a rabbit's foot. Knocked down by Rivera. One and two to Cordoba. You know, I was thinking to myself, the Mets came out with so much life on the first two nights here, and they look a little placid tonight. But you know, it's really not. The, it's really the pitcher's fault. When the pitcher has a tough first inning, it makes everyone on the field look a little ill at ease. Matt's already 25 pitches deep into this inning. Is 1-2 to Cordoba, and he gets him swinging on the breaking ball to end the inning. A couple of strikeouts from Matt's, but a two-run homer for Manuel Margot gets the Padres off to a fast start. 2-0 after one. Even Matt's after a rough first inning, but Matt's able to limit the damage to just two runs. Jay Bruce will lead off the second for New York. Jay is three for nine in this series.
Andrews still tied for fourth in the National League with those 25 home runs. Driven in 67, two in this series. Changeup misses, 2 0. Wilmer Flores on deck, then Lucas Duda for the Mets. Against Chassin in the second. Chassin helped out by a couple of terrific plays by his outfielders in the first. Jolice Chassin, longtime Colorado Rocky, who has really kicked around the last couple of years. He was released by the Rockies during spring training in 2015. Since then, he's been with Cleveland, Minnesota, Atlanta, the Angels, and now the Padres. He was a very effective pitcher for a while in Colorado. There's ball four, and Bruce is on with a leadoff walk. Well, one of the seminal plays that David Wright ever made was in this ballpark in 2005. Brian Giles at the plate, Day Sung Ku on the mound, and David, no need for a glove. Oh, what a play. I only can think of two plays like that. Kevin Mitchell's play as a giant in St. Louis, and of course David's right, uh, David's play here. Unfortunately, that play is not the greatest memory from that series. The greatest memory is the worst thing that happened in that series, which was Carlos Beltran and Mike Cameron oh. colliding like two missiles in right center field. They were both airborne, right, when they went for they the ball. Were both Parallel to the ground and went head to head, and it was uh, it was one of the worst outfield collisions I've ever seen. It kept Cameron out for the rest of the year, and Beltron. Remember that was his first year with the Mets in 2005, and he had facial fractures. He came back, I think it was five days later, and played. Flores takes one the other way, foul. Might have broken his bat, and it's one and two. Do you remember your? Your call for that because when something like that happens, I know it's your job to keep speaking, but it must have been hard. You know? It was very difficult. Yeah. What I remember is that the ball was rolling around. And I don't remember who it was. One of the infielders came out and picked it up, and, and the runner for the Padres, I think, wound up at third base. Um, but all you could think about were the two guys lying on the ground out there, and it was it was really bad. Good slider by Chassin to strike out Flores for the first down. Well, uh, location, location, location has been the big difference for Chassin. He's been able to keep his slider on the outside corner, and he's got the sink uh, back on his sinker. And from above, you can see that Wilmer nowhere close to putting that ball in play. So one out and one out. Now Duda, Lucas, two for eight in this series. Takes below the knees from Chassin. To the right on the back of that line. Getting as deep as he can. There used to be a day when hitters would change where they're in the box depending on the pitcher. Those days are pretty much gone. Everyone has one place they like to stand, due to being no exception, and that is that big size 15 or whatever size hmm. shoe he has on that back line. 2 and 0. And changeup misses 3 and 0. So Chassin's already walked a batter in this inning. Got his road gray spikes on. Nice look for Lucas. So nice after the games. We have to walk on our way back to the hotel, kind of through all the families that are here. A lot of the guys from California. And you know exactly who Mr. Duda is when you walk by him. He's just the biggest man in the room. Well, you do and you don't. Okay. Right? Because right. he looks a lot like Lucas. But the difference is that Lucas's dad. That's line base hit into right field. And Bruce will pull on at second base. So Duda has the Mets first hit of the night and the Mets have the tying runs on base. The difference is Lucas's dad talks a lot. <laughs> He's a very voluble guy. Very friendly. 
And you know Lucas is friendly in his own way but yeah. he, he's very quiet. Well this is what happens when your parents talk all the time you become a kid who can't say anything <laughs> you never have a chance. But he does the talking with a stick. And this is a rip to right field. A follow through with that left leg ended right up behind the plate. So now Reyes with two on and one out. We'll say one for seven in this series. And he takes one at the knees from Chessine. Bruce at second, Duda at first with one out. And the curve ball bends outside. One and one. I always think of Phil Cuzzy. Um, he's a he's a good home plate umpire, but more of a hitter's umpire. Doesn't usually have a big plate. Ground ball past the mound, base hit into center field. Bruce around third being way at home. The throw to the plate by Margo is way offline, and the Mets have their first run of the night. A seeing eye single for Reyes brings in Bruce to cut the Padre lead to two to one. Well, leadoff walk always kills pitchers, and Reyes gets this hit up the middle. Nice try by Cordoba, and the throw not even close by Margot. He's got a good arm. We saw it last night. And Cordoba doing the right thing just out of his reach. So Reyes drives in his 37th run of the year. And now the former Padre, Rene Rivera. His first plate appearance in this series. And he takes a big rip, nothing in one. Renee had a nice year for the Padres in 2014. Had 11 home runs that season, his career high. He's got a home run and three career at bats against Chassin. Duda at second, Reyes at first with one out. And Renee fouls one away. Well, Chassin has had starkly different success at home and on the road. Of course, part of that road number is yeah. what the Mets did to him in that start at City Field, seven runs and two thirds of an inning. But this is a very good pitcher's ballpark. And in part because of that, because it's a good pitcher's park, Petco Park has the shortest games of any facility in the major leagues this year. We've played some short games so far. It's the only ballpark in the major leagues that is averaging under three hours per game. Padres don't hit a lot, they pitch pretty well. There you go. Off the corner, two and two. Opened in 2004. They moved the fences in a little bit in center field and in right field a few years ago. The Phil Nevin effect. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, but Brian Giles Brian too. Brian Giles also. When they got here, they were aghast at how difficult it was to hit home runs. But that's happened in several places. It happened at City Field. It happened in Detroit at Comerica Park. They moved the fences in there, right? It happened in Miami. They've moved the fences in. It, it happens everywhere. Whenever the hitters whine, can't wait to move the fences in. Hmm. It's unbelievable. Well, the funny thing is when when those all those parks were designed, we were in an era where it looked like pitching was ascendant. So yeah. teams built pitching friendly ballparks. Now, of course, baseball's gone completely the other way over the last few years with the home run revolution. 2 2 coming, and Renee strikes out for the second out. So, two strikeouts in the inning for Chassin. Chassin just went right after him with just fastballs to Rivera and kind of blew him away. Can you imagine if the pitcher said, Well, you know, you're always moving the fences, and once you move the mound to 60 feet, just making it, you know, six inches closer. Stephen Matz and he drives one to center field but Margot gets over and snags it to end the inning. 
bullet off the bat of Mats. But the Mets strand two, they score one and trail two to one. and not see our friend Jerry Coleman who passed away three years ago. They have a great tribute to Jerry up here at the press level. Of course, Jerry was a great player for the Yankees, the longtime broadcaster for the Yankees, and then here in San Diego. But the, um, his legacy is not just a baseball legacy. It is a, a, the legacy of a great American. Yeah. Marine fighter pilot in World War II and Korea. Won numerous citations for his valor. And um, he is honored here as he should be as uh, not only the wonderful man that he was, but also the great American life that he lived. Didn't you do games with him on the CBS radio network? I did. And it was an honor to, to work with Jerry, who was one of the most was one of the most affable human beings you could possibly be around. Oh, doctor, hang a star. He had some other ones that he used to use. He was great. He was just one of those guys when when you would come to the ballpark here he would come in your booth and he'd be there for a half hour. You wouldn't have to say a word. You just listen to him and he just felt great every single time. Go to the game. You just you I, just you, you just you nailed it. I don't, I don't I don't know how I do it. I don't know how I do it. And the um, you should know that the Padre broadcasters here still have a star that they hang out of the booth which Jerry started yeah. every time a Padre makes a great defensive play and in fact they 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 uh, displayed it twice during that first yeah, inning tonight. That's great. Well, that's two great announcers here in Don Arcillo and Mark Grant. Luis Torrens grounds went down to first and Duda makes the play one out. I mean, he had his uh, baseball career interrupted twice, fighter pilot in World War II, and then Korea, the Korean War. So, like you said, just uh, just they don't make men like that anymore. They just don't. Here's Juice Chausin bounces one past the mound, and he sneaks one through into center field. For a base hit. Uh, seeing a pretty good hitter, his ninth hit this year. And he's aboard with one out. And all the trading deadline looms five days away. The Phillies have made a deal. Oh, wow. Their all star Pat Mishek goes to Colorado for three prospects. That's a, that's a great pickup because, you know, Nishek is a guy that 
when he's at his best what do they hit off from Gary ground balls so he should be able to survive Colorado and you know that Colorado bullpen has had some really good elements this year with Greg Holland and Jake McGee having fine seasons but some of the other pieces have faded a little bit Mike Dunn hasn't pitched as well as they had hoped Alvino hasn't been right. as good so uh, they certainly needed a little bit of boost as they try to hang on to their wild card position ground ball to short could be two Reyes to second Flores to first double play side retired they double up Pirella to end the inning. So Mats gets through the second as we remember our good friend Jerry Coleman. Cheese steaks there, but but we're in Denver. Second time around the batting order for Jolice Chassin. Michael Conforto leads off in the third and takes a knee high strike. Michael hit a pop fly on the first pitch he saw down the left field line, and Jabari Blash made a highlight reel sliding catch, almost over sliding it, and that's how this game began. Ball and a strike to Conforto as Drupal Cabrera on deck, and then you went a Cespedes in the third. Giving a Conforto a hit if he wanted to bunt. The way he's swinging right now. Yeah, that's the first time I've ever said it about him. Curveball outside, two and one. Conforto since the All Star break, 326, five home runs. Mets are eight and four since the All Star break, trying to pull off that exceedingly well thing. Eight and four is good. Eight and four is. I mean, it's a pace for 108 wins. Well, yeah, you got them all year, <laughs> right. all year. But exactly. I wonder what, where that puts them if they play that kind of baseball the rest of the way. Put them around that 88 mark. Well, the problem is, what kind of club will they have yeah, that's right. in a week? Because it certainly appears as though the Mets are all in for selling if they can sell. The question is, are other teams buying what they have to sell? Well, they're definitely buying. It's just what the Mets want to return, right? right. That's always the issue. Well, but right. Yeah. And, right. and when a guy like Nisha gets traded to the Rockies who needed bullpen help, maybe that makes Addison Reed's value a little less than it was an hour ago. Yeah, three prospects is, is what you're going to get, or, or, or three young players but what I'm saying is a team that, ha that has a need is taken off the table yeah. for having a need that's, that's right. one less potential buyer it's 
Seventh pitch coming to Conforto. And it's inside in the full count. Chelsea walked the leadoff hitter in the second inning. And that turned into the first med run. You know it would have been great in Colorado? Zach Britt. I mean, he's great anywhere, but. Curveball gets Conforto. Third strikeout for Chassin. One down in the third. Here's Cabrera who popped a short his first time up. Chassin would be a nice piece for teams out there that need a starting pitcher. He certainly has hit his stride. Rough beginning to his season, but the last eight starts, he has been on top of his game. Best season was in 2013. He won 14 games for the Rockies that year. 14 and 10, 3.47 pitching in that ballpark it was spectacular, but his results fell off. He had some injury issues the next two seasons, and the Rockies let him go. Knee high fastball, and he's keeping that ball down tonight. A ball and a strike to Cabrera. Andy Green. Fly ball, shallow right center. Angling in is Margot to get it. And that's the second out. Well, we showed you the uh, the beef on the uh, on the grill. Now we got the ribs. Who's who's getting all this food is what I want to know. I don't know but it, I'm sure it'll all be gone. Where was that food when we were eating dinner tonight. <laughs> I mean, although the uh, the dining room facility here is outstanding they do a great job in San Diego. The best part. I know I have I've had one each day the cookies. Yes. Yeah. I'm a cookie crazy. White chocolate macadamia <laughs> cookies. Yeah. Cespedes, it's a bullet. One hopper snagged by Spangenberg, and he throws him out. Nice play by Corey Spangenberg, helping Chassin to a 1 2 3 inning as the Padres continue to put together a fine defensive game. Play deep, he hits it hard. Worked out for Spangenberg. Still 2 to 1 San Diego in the third. Numbers here in San Diego. One of them belongs to the former Cy Young Award winner Randy Jones. His number 35 is displayed prominently. 
Randy uh, in, a, in an era now of great velocity was exactly the opposite a left hander who could not have thrown less hard. <laughs> Drilled into left field, a base hit for Margot, and that ball's going to go all the way up the gap. And Margot's got his second extra base hit of the night. He takes the turn, he's going to try for three. The relay will not be made, and Margot has a triple. Never stopped coming out of the box. And he legs a gapper to left center into three bases. Well, just a bullet. That's why it splits the defense. Can't hit it any harder than this. And then a mistake here by the Mets defense. Watch Cespedes when he picks it up. He misses the cutoff man. You got to hit Reyes there. He hits Reyes. He got a shot. He did not. First pitch swinging is Margot. I think these Padre hitters have been very aggressive. Makes sense when you have a young team. So a home run and a triple tonight for Margot. And here's Will Myers. Mets have the infield back in a one run game. Myers took a call third strike his first time up. So there's the sixth hit against Steven Matz. Margot's two run homer in the first inning, accounting for the first two runs, and now he's standing at third with nobody out. And Myers lifts one foul. That'll go out of play one and one. Now well, triples are made from home to first, right? Yeah, and he is a very pretty to watch. Very talented player. And even though the Mets have won the first two games here, what have you and I said? Andy Green's team plays hard. Margot now seven for ten in this series, so he's had himself a fine trio of games. Inside throw to third, and Margot gets back. Rivera, who picked off a runner over the weekend when he got Matt Chapman of the A's, picked him off third, trying for another one. That's a set play, folks. Rivera will have a sign that he'll give Cabrera. See how Cabrera's inching over to third base? He'll let him know. That way Cabrera can get there in time. Myers hits a bullet down the line. That'll bring in a run. Margot comes in to score. Myers pulls in at second with an RBI double, and they're just hitting bullets against Steven Matz tonight. It's three to one San Diego. 49th run batted in for Myers, his first hit in this series. That looked like a little cutter. Maybe the first one he's thrown today, and Myers was all over it. I mean, I don't know what the exit velocity of these hits are, but all of them have been squared up. I mean, Cabrera couldn't even move before that ball was past him. The exit velocity is they're hitting them real hard. <laughs> Here's Hunter Renfro, and he takes a big hack at a high fastball. Renfro drove a double to right center on the first pitch he saw in the first inning. Hundred and six exit velocity for Margot, one oh nine for Myers. It just tells you anything over a hundred is scorched. As I said, hit the ball really hard. Yeah, exactly. Not to say more than that. You're right. <laughs> I don't know why I said the number. My fault. There's nothing wrong with the number. It's just that you already knew it was hit hard. Yeah, but you know, there's a lot of fans out there, Gary. They like to know the number. I guess it's only fair because for all these years since the advent of the radar gun we've had the numbers for the pitchers. Yes. So now the hitters have their numbers. But what I need being a former pitcher occasionally is when the guy gets really jammed and hits it really softly. Forty six forty six mile an hour exit velocity. Exit velocity. Yes. OK yes. so we, we need to start revealing those. OK. <laughs> Owen to to Renfro with Jabari Blash on deck. Dancing off second is Myers drawing Matz's attention. Here's your Porsche leaderboard. Rookie home run leaders. Only three rookies have hit 20 or more. Aaron Judge, Cody Bellinger, and last night. Hunter Renfro joined that club. The name on that list that no one knows is Matt Davidson for the Chicago White Sox. A lot of anonymity on the south side. <laughs> One two coming. Inside and he's hit by the pitch. 
So Matz hits a batter for the first time this season as he drills Renfro with an 0 2 pitch. It's interesting Renfro looked at him because the ball wasn't even close. It was a cutter that caught him right in the upper quad. Renfro's built like a tank so that's not going to hurt him. Well, Matz had stayed away from that slider in his last start against Oakland. He's tried to throw a few tonight. He's trying to throw something different because uh, everything they've thrown up there, uh, they've been all over. Still nobody out. A run already home here in the third. And there's a little bit of stirring around in the Mets bullpen. As Matz gets set to face Jabari Blash, who lined one off Reyes's glove for a base hit his first time up. And Blash takes it high. Correct me if I'm wrong. The Mets do have Tyler Pill in their bullpen, yes. don't they? And he's a guy that has started, so he could be your long man if you needed it. He's probably only here for today. Tomorrow, the Mets will activate Chris Flexen, who is here, but officially on the taxi squad. And Flexen will make his first big league start tomorrow. What does that mean? Is he, is it he, means he's allowed to be in the ballpark, but he's not on the roster. It used to be. If you weren't on the 25 man roster yeah. or the disabled list, you weren't even allowed in the ballpark. That's right. Or it's certainly not in the clubhouse. And they have to hide you in a hotel room. Now they've got a rule where if you come up the day before you're activated, you can be on the taxi squad and in the clubhouse. Everything's so sweet now. We're kinder and gentler now, you know? Some of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There he is. There's Tyler Pill, who's about to start throwing as Matt struggles here in the third. Matt takes a look at Myers, who's stolen 10 bases this year. So he's a threat to run every once in a while. Now, lately, when Matt has gotten in trouble, he's not been able to find his way out. As is evident from those numbers. One, two, and Blash takes it inside. Two and two. I always tell you, Gary, that's the big number for me. I know they can crunch the numbers on pitchers as much as they want. Every pitcher in baseball has runners on base, every starting pitcher. It's how you pitch for those runners on base, whether you're going to have a big year, a good year, or a bad year. And Blash pops one foul that'll come back out of play. MLB dot MLB dot TV premium is back and better than ever. Watch every out of market regular season game live on over 400 supported devices. Plus get a free subscription to at bat premium. See Matt's with the change up grip. That he holds behind his back, and he'll change it in his glove if he's not going to throw that change. Blash fouls off another one. Jabari Blash, native of the Virgin Islands, drafted by Seattle, moved to Oakland in the Rule 5 draft, and then came to San Diego in the Yonder Alonzo deal. Seventh pitch of the at bat, and the curveball struck him out. So Matz finally gets the first out of the inning, his third strikeout of the night. Well, you know what's interesting? You see where the rosin bag is here for Dan Worthen? He's placing it where he wants Stephen Matz to make sure his stride goes further than that. Rosin bag. He doesn't want his stride to be too short. It's very much like when you're teaching young kids not to step in the bucket. You put a bat behind their leg and they make sure they don't step in the bucket. This is what this does to make sure your stride is long enough. So that would have been earlier this week when yep. he was throwing his bullpen session. So does he make a mark for himself on the mound to try and remind him how far he should strike. Yeah. Uh, you know I think what happens with Steven and watching him for his starts. Reyes with the bobble gets it to Flores but Flores 
could not get the ball cleanly into his glove before Renfro arrived and everybody's safe. Looked like a double play ball off the bat, but Reyes bobbled it. Flores couldn't come up with it cleanly on the flip, and no outs recorded. Ball hits right in the middle of the glove. Reyes couldn't handle it, but he recovered in time to get the out. But Flores missed it with his glove, tried to catch it with his bare hand, and in that, that exchange, the Mets get no outs. How are they going to score that one? They get that one a hit too? Come on. That's two me. errors tonight on Reyes that have been scored hits by the hometown scorer. That's just ridiculous. Here's Spangenberg with the bases loaded. And a curveball in for a strike. You know, those things are all uh, challengeable now in the MLB court of official scoring. Oh, the court? Yes, there's a there's a panel that that you can appeal the, the calls to. Cordova takes a strike and it's 0 and 2. I'd like to see that published. I'd like to see who challenges the most. Well, Not only team, but individuals. So, can, so I can have a good laugh. Here's the 0-2, and the curveball bounced foul. The problem in trying to get a an error changed to a hit, or or a hit, right? The problem with trying to get a hit changed to an error yeah. is that if you are the fielder, you want to get it changed. If you're the pitcher. You'd like to get a change to an error, but of course the hitter feels otherwise. To do it the other way around, to get from a hit to an error, you have to diss your own teammate. Oh, right? I got it. I got it. If you're the pitcher and there's a hit and you want it to be an error, right? Now you're throwing your fielder under the bus. I played with plenty of people who didn't have any problem doing that. <laughs> No matter how you slice it though Matt is in a world of trouble. Bases loaded one out one two to Cordoba and he struck him out with the curveball second strike out of the inning they both come on the curve and Matt's may have a way of minimizing the damage here two down in the inning. Well the breaking ball I think three of the four strikeouts have come on that pitch so it's been his best pitch. Second time he's gotten Cordoba, and now it's left to the number eight hitter, Luis Torrens, the catcher. A run is in, Myers at third, Renfro at second, Spangenberg at first with two out. A little cleaner fielding, and the inning would have already been over. And Torrens goes after the changeup, nothing at one. Another one of these very young San Diego players they've got in the lineup tonight, just tonight, Margot, who's 22, Cordoba, who's 21, Torrens, who's 21. Torrens, like Cordoba, a rule five pick. Came out of the Yankees organization. And he drives one out to right center field, back in the gap, and it's off the wall. Myers is in, Renfro is in, Spangenberg will score. The throw to third, it gets away from Cabrera. It's a three run triple for Luis Torrens. And the Padres lead it six to one. First major league triple for Luis Torrens, who came into the night with three RBIs and just doubled that with one swing of the bat. Well, you're talking about the ages of these young San Diego Padres and this fan base has got to be excited not at their record but how some of these young players are playing better as the year goes along and Torrens just missed hitting that ball out of the ballpark looked like it hit right on the edge maybe a foot more and it's over the fence for a grand slam. So Matt who was on the edge of getting out of it after striking out Cordoba. Now finds himself on the short end of a six to one score. Well, Spangenberg, who was on first base, 
is the one who's really hustling. And he can run. Justine swinging at a 2 0 pitch and fouling it off. Justine bounced a single up the middle his first time up. His ninth hit this year. He's hit 250. Nine hits now against Mats as he has had himself another ugly night. Justine broke his bat on that last swing. He'll go back for a new one. You see how the fence is shorter, about three feet to the left of where that ball hit? If it had been three feet to the left, it would have been a grand slam. And it would have been the first big league home run for Terenz. Instead, he settles for his first major league triple. Padres are filling the scorecard, aren't they? With home runs and triples and doubles. And they have two triples in this inning. Margo began the inning with a triple. Curveball bounced to short. Reyes waits on it and throws that chassis to end the inning. But a four run third inning for the Padres. Torrens drives in three with a triple. And it's six to one San Diego after three. They've had some really good players here over the years, and Randy Jones was one of them, the soft tossing left hander with the great sinker ball who would pitch a game in an hour and 35 minutes routinely. Get it, throw it, get it out on the first or second pitch. That was his specialty. Finished up his career with the Mets. He was kind of done by then, but he had two spectacular years here in San Diego. Won the Cy Young in 1976. And he is standing by Randy Jones is with Steve Gelb Steve uh, Gary thank you so much and, and Randy before we even get to any of the baseball stuff I know this was a tough winter for you yeah. diagnosed with throat cancer but the good news recently totally cancer free how you feeling right uh, now? Yeah, I'm feeling really good yeah, and it's great to be cancer free a lot of hard work this winter with the radiation and chemo and uh, I just really appreciate all the prayers from all the fans and stuff and. Uh, it feels good. It's, it's uh, the rehab is a little bit longer than uh, typically we baseball players would like, but I understand the process. But you know, I get a little stronger every week, so yeah, I'm looking forward to a complete recovery by the end of the year. That well, was great news to hear that, Randy. And you know, one of the things Gary just mentioned is that obviously you're known as a Padre, but spent the last two years of your career with the Mets. I mean, that's quite a difference—the laid-back atmosphere of San Diego and the the pressure cooker of New York. What was the difference between playing in those two cities? Well, it was completely different. You, you're 
fans were, were avid and I loved them. I thought it was great. I loved the atmosphere in New York. I enjoyed, you know, coming down there and competing, you know, when I was with the Padres and, and playing there those two seasons. I would honestly wish my arm would have been healthier, could have contributed a little bit more, but that's just the nature of the beast and, of the game at the end of my career. But I um, had a good time in Long Island, lived out there and had a good time. The family had a great time and I have nothing but good memories about New York. Randy, something else that uh, Gary just mentioned is is how different you are as a pitcher, were as a pitcher than most of the guys that are coming up today. Do you even think you would have gotten no. the shot if you were pitching today? Now, Gary, Gary, you know I would have never even got a shot. Man, <laughs> come on, you can't be throwing 75 miles an hour. You know, and they go, hey, how could you 85, maybe max, and, and the ball didn't sink at 85, so I didn't stay there very long. I know that. I wasn't going to do that. But nobody really pitches the contact or understands that quite like we used to but uh, it's all about the fastball and 90 plus miles an hour you know but I would I would still like I said I'd like to be the third guy in, in the rotation let a couple guys throw in 98 pitch the first two games and then slip me in their game three at 75 80 miles an hour I'm going to have a blast gentlemen I'm going to have a lot of fun <laughs> and you did have a lot of fun <laughs> during the course of your career but you mentioned something right there that's interesting understanding pitching to contact what exactly does that mean for people that obviously never got to this level well you need number one they're, they're taught now to go deep in the count and, and what I did is I uh, you know I, I beat the Pirates one night through 68 pitches in a nine inning game and that's pitching to contact I want you to hit the baseball you know you don't need to be taking it and a lot of times when they would try that, it'd be 0 2 before you could blink because I was throwing strikes. You know, good sinker ball, you know, but they were strikes. And they had to swing the bat. And that's what it's all about, is I want you to swing the bat. But I was able to change speeds, set up certain pitches. And, and it's the idea of today of watching these pitchers try to get the, these guys out the third time or even thinking about getting them out the fourth time. They don't know how to do it. And, you know, it's a knack, but you need to you know how to change speeds, move the ball around, have command, know how to pitch. Throwers can't get them out three times in a row usually, but pitchers can. Randy, who taught you to do that? I'm basically on, on the random of coaches all throughout, whether it be Tom Morgan, one of my old pitching coaches, and, you know, Don Terranova had me in high school and started at Paul D. at Chapman, where I went to college. I mean, everybody preached that, and, and I always had pride on my control and my command of the strike zone, and I always had that from a younger age, and, and I knew how important that was, and I kept it. Any hitter in particular that you really frustrated that you got great joy out of frustrating? Pete Rose was my favorite to be really <laughs> frustrated. I mean, I, it just went on and on and on for a few years. I think he might have been 0 for 1976. I don't know if he got a hit off me in four games that I, I pitched. I, I shut him out four times, I think, that year. And I don't know if he ever got a hit. But, I mean, one day he even tried to hit left-handed against me. And, and it was really a lot of fun because, you know, right-handed Gary, I never threw him a slider. I didn't have to. I threw him all sinkers. So when he came up there left-handed, I threw him three sliders and punched him out, and he never moved the bat. And he didn't even know I had a slider. He'd never seen it before. <laughs> when he walked up there hitting left-handed, what was your initial reaction when you saw Pete Rose stay lefty against the lefty? I was standing on the mound. I looked down at him and go, you sure you want to do this? And he looked at me and grinned and goes, just pitch. And I said, I will. Randy. 35 years since you've retired. We don't often ask baseball players something like this, but what did being a professional baseball player and a prominent one do and open up in terms of possibilities for the remainder of your life? Unbelievable. Uh, the opportunities that it did. And I think uh, the, the first thing is you chase that dream as a kid, and we've all dreamed that about being a big league baseball player. And I achieved that dream. That was the first thing. And to do it for 10 years and was blessed for that. And the relationship I had with the fans in my magical years, my good years. Uh, and it, I just knew that that work ethic and how hard I worked to be that good in baseball. And if I, you work that hard in any other you know, business, if you love that business or having fun doing it, you're going to be successful. And, uh, you know, I, so I, haven't, I haven't been disappointed, and, but as it comes full circle, you know, I find myself 67 years old, and what I'm really enjoying is being here at the ballpark all summer, working for the ball club, doing a little bit of radio, selling a little bit of barbecue that I have the last 26 years, and I look forward to going to work every single day. Randy Jones, this was so much fun. <laughs> Thank you for the time. Thank you for spending this much time with us and, and it's great to see you healthy as well. Great great. I hope everybody's well in New York and uh, and I wish them luck. Right. Thanks so much Randy. Gary is Cy Young winning season 1976 40 games started 25 complete games.
He's a delight, isn't he? It's unbelievable. I, I, I've known Randy for a long time, so I know um, how funny he can be. You could sense it there um, when you're one on one and a former player talking to Randy Jones. He can be a little more colorful right. than he was there with Steve Gary Gelbs. <laughs> well, he had a great recollection of his uh, his confrontations with Pete Rose. I mean, you know, Pete didn't hit under 200 against a lot of people. He hit under 200 against Randy Jones. Chassin strikes out Reyes to finish off the top of the fourth. Fourth strikeout for Chassin. It's been a good night for the Padre right-hander tonight. He's got a 6-1 lead going to the bottom of the fourth. We seem to have a theme tonight. We had the uh, the beef, we yeah. had the uh, pork ribs, and uh, now we've gone to the uh, sausages and hot dogs. Is that the biggest hot dogs you, you've ever seen? Those are um, those are large, right? Because the Dodger dog is they're long, long like that, but, but they're thin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Stephen Matt's out after three innings. Eric Goodell in. Boy, it's um, you see the commission's numbers uh, so far this year. Home run ball has been an issue uh, for Eric. Jose Pirella up for the third time takes a fastball for a strike. Pirella had a base hit, scored a run in the first, grounded into a double play in the second. Matt's threw 66 pitches over three innings, allowed six runs, nine hits, no walks, four strikeouts, a hit batsman, and a home run. And through nine starts this year, Matz's earned run average has now ballooned to 5.51. You know, Gary, I, I, when I had a bad start, and I had plenty of them, I remember the thing I used to say when I was taken out and going into the locker room, taking your shirt off, and putting your hat in your locker, and just staring at the space saying, what a waste. I mean, four days I've been working to get to this day, and I go out there and look that bad. That's how you feel uh, when you have one of those days on every fifth day. But now for Steven, we're talking about four straight yeah. starts now where things have not gone well. I mean, it was a little bit better against Oakland that last time, but um, you know, that dreadful start against the Rockies, three innings, six runs, nine hits tonight. What are you seeing? Are we seeing a pitcher who's healthy? Or are we seeing a guy who's just messed up with his mechanics? What do you, what do you see when you watch him? Okay, I, I think that, and this is my opinion, and uh, and I'm going to have to talk uh, to Danny at some point about it to see what his opinion is. But I think that, and it's interesting that Steve Gelbs was talking to Randy Jones. Goodell strikes out Perella one out. Is that? Is that? 
Steven Matz has a 93 to 95 mile an hour fastball. He's got an arm that people would die for. And he's become the last few starts and especially this game a curveball and changeup pitcher. So he obviously has not established his fastball. And until he does that and his breaking pitches come off the fastball then we'll see the pitcher that he can be. And I'm talking about let's say percentage wise for you folks at home. I think he should be 58 to 66 percent should be fastballs and the breaking ball and change up come off that. That's how good his fastball is. But if you don't spot it well that's how you end up with nine hits in, in three innings. And isn't that really hasn't that been the biggest issue for him that his fastball location has been too often right in the middle of the plate right in the middle of the plate. He's uh, behind in counts which is hurting and he's going through the same thing but longer that Jacob DeGrom who has a good arm went through for those two starts. Fastball command was bad. A lot of middle of the plate fastballs result two bad starts for DeGrom. He's turned it around. Matz is going to have to figure it out sooner than later. And well Margot putting a big piece of the hurt on Matz tonight with a home run and a triple in his first two at bats. So he's got the two toughest parts of the cycle out of the way. Well, I don't drool. Um, I proverbially drool over the stuff that Matz has. You know, he just his arm is so good. He has so much talent, and um, uh, uh, these kind of games uh, will happen to everybody, to everybody, but they shouldn't happen as frequently as they are to Stephen. Um, let me just ask this again, okay. to, to I don't know, maybe allay people's fears, because. So much of the issues that have surrounded Steven since the day that he signed have been about his health. Yeah. Do you see a healthy pitcher? I see a healthy pitcher. I do. I see the snap on the curveball. Uh, how about the strikeouts on his curveball tonight? The snap was there. Um, I see the speed. The speed is 93 to 95 in the fastball. I see all the things that you need physically to get hitters out. But it doesn't matter if you throw 95. Or you have a razor blade slider. If it's in the middle of the plate, these guys are going to hurt you. And you're talking about a young team that, you know, in my in my heyday when I was a decent pitcher, you would lick your chops when you're facing a young team like this. This is where you're supposed to make your hay against a team like this, and and they really uh, got to him today. Three and two to Margot with one out. Will Myers on deck. And the splitter got him. Back to back strikeouts for Goodell to start the fourth inning. Well, that's the last four starts. And uh, they, in the graphic, they don't even bother calculating the earned run average, which is probably, probably kind. Well, you know, four starts, 13 in the third innings. I mean, do the math. You know, you're just not out there long enough. So here's Will Myers who doubled in a run his last time up one for two on the night. You know at this level whether you're a hitter or a pitcher. Um, everyone's going to go through bad streaks. You know we always mention when the guys over 22 like Curtis Granderson was last night until he walked and had two hits. It's just the nature of the game you have to mention it. Myers gets under one to center. But the really good players, whether they're pitchers or hitters, keep those valleys very short. One, two, three inning for Goodell. We go to the fifth in San Diego with the Mets down six to one.
to T-Mobile Unlimited Baseball break. Chris Sell this afternoon was tremendous again. Seven innings, three hits, 11 strikeouts. Red Sox shut out the Mariners 4 nothing. Bryce Harper ejected, but the Nats scored seven runs in the bottom of the eighth inning. Ryan Zimmerman with a go-ahead hit, and the Nats beat the Brewers 8-5. to five. And D. Gordon, who last homered against Bartolo Colon last September in that uh, memorable game at Marlins Parks, hit his first home run since. And the Marlins are up on the Rangers 18-6 to six in the bottom of the eighth. 18-6. Rene Rivera rolls one out to short. Spinorama for Cordova. One out. Well, we've seen it already. Cordova has a great range, gets to it, and puts something on that throw. Boy, rule five pick. Where'd you say he came from? Uh, Cordova was in the Cardinal organization. Good player. Of course, they have a pretty good young shortstop. Yeah. They're now more of an offensive guy. Curtis Granderson will bat for Eric Goodell. Curtis got the start last night. Was on base three times. A walk, a single, and a double. Well, Jalice Chassin, last time he faced the Mets, got knocked out in the first inning. He was scratched last night because he was having some back issues. So far, everything has gone just about perfectly for Chassin tonight. This team has scored him some runs. He's looked sharp. He's allowed just two singles. They both came in the second inning and produced the only mid run. And the 29 year old right hander is cruising. That's a good slider. Late break. Tyler Pill up in the Mets bullpen. Looks like he'll get the bottom of the fifth. I think the Rangers are going to have to use a uh, an everyday player to pitch at some point, right? With the score it is, or the way it is, could be. Did Hamill start that game? I think he did. Ooh. Stanton hit his 33rd. Yelich hit another home run. He had one last night. Granderson takes the slider for strike three call. Fifth strikeout for Chasin. Two down in the fifth. Be at City Field Saturday, August 5th. The Mets take on the Dodgers at 4.05. The first 15,000 fans in attendance will receive a UN assessment as number 52 chain, courtesy of Good Humor. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash tickets. Now Conforto, who's 0 for 2 tonight. I mean, think about the change in fortunes for Chassin against the Mets. When he faced them in New York, Conforto had two hits, including a home run in the first inning mm. against Chassin. He was the first and last batter he faced. 40 pitches in those two thirds of an inning pitched. Dumps one into center field, and in comes Margot, and another terrific play. For the San Diego outfield. They have been all over the place tonight. Margot's done it with the bat. And now the sliding catch to take a base in away from Conforto. And they hang the star in the adjoining booth.
Here's your line score. It's been all Padres tonight, six to one. They're active on the uh, the beach out in out beyond the center field fence. Final game of the series tomorrow night. We start an hour earlier. Chris Flexen makes his major league debut. He was dominant in Binghamton. Will be the first Mets starting pitcher to be called up from Double A to make his big league debut since Mike Pelfrey in 2006. The Pelf. Luis Perdomo, who has three triples in addition to his pitching numbers, goes for the Padres. Tyler Pill, whose last outing for the Mets came in Southern California in L.A. in June, gets the relief assignment here. Uh, from Covina, California, just east of L.A., um, Tyler Pill's been, this is his third stint with the big club. He's made three starts, now his third relief outing. Hunter Renfro, first man to face him. And he gets a fastball in for a strike. Pill was called up when Zach Wheeler was placed on the disabled list earlier this week. And you'd have to guess that he'll be going back to Vegas after the game tonight to make room for Chris Flexen. Yeah. Well, they need him to, uh, to get some outs. Maybe pitch two plus innings. Well, I mean, he's a starting pitcher. Yeah. He's certainly capable of giving you multiple innings and unless the Mets get a little closer in this game he might run him out there as long as he can go take some pressure off the rest of the bullpen Renfro is doubled and been hit by a pitch tonight and he bounces one to the right side nice big hop for Flores and Wilmer throws him out one away Eric Goodell worked a one two three inning in the fourth struck out a pair Here's Jabari Blash. And a base hit off Reyes's glove in the first, then struck out in the third. Well, San Diego has had a great defensive game, and he started it with the first out, a sliding catch in left field. First pitch of the game. It was an interesting good, bad, good play because he slid too far. And was fortunate to reach back and make the catch. If he had slid too far and not made the catch, it would have been something for the blooper reel. <laughs> That's right. Well, I think what's difficult for all outfielders in most of the ballparks today is when they're going up against that fence, they have to decide when they're going to slide because really it's the only way to make the play. If you run headlong, especially a guy as tall as Jabari, he ends up in the stands. Well, especially with those, not only is, is the fence close to the line, but when you get to the bottom there, it's so low. And you, you worry about, you know, hitting that knee high and flipping into the stands if you're, on, if you're at full <sighs> speed. Lash hits one along the left field line, and Cespedes eases over. Two out. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Delta Mets fans win amazing prizes from Delta Airlines visit SNY.TV slash Delta dugout for detail. Love that view from one of the high rises just beyond right field. I mean this would be one of the ballparks that if you played for the Padres you could live in one of those. Co I don't know what they call them condos or co-ops here and uh, be right next to the ballpark come San Francisco is another ballpark where a lot of the players live close. Spangenberg hits a one hopper to Flores and it's a one two three inning for Tyler Pill six up and six down for the Mets bullpen trying to keep them in the game and give them a chance to come back as we head for the sixth. It's food night on our broadcast. <laughs> what else can we eat?
Well, some Met fans have made their way out to San Diego, and why not? What a great place to visit in the summertime or any time. Sixth inning. As Dribble Cabrera leads off against Jalise Chassin, who's really had his slider working tonight. And gets ahead on Cabrera, who's popped up to short and flat out to center field 0 for 2. Mets have won the first two games of this series. They also won the last two games they played here last year. So four straight wins for the Mets at Petco Park. That's streaks in jeopardy. That's lined the other way. A base hit for Cabrera to start the sixth inning. So as Dribble has just the third mid hit of the night. And Cespedes will come up with a man on. Fastball up and away. Nice heading by Cabrera going the other way. You were talking about the Mets. Winning four straight. I, I don't remember the Mets ever winning games whenever I do games here. Well, to to find a streak this long for the Mets, four in a row in San Diego, the last time before this that that happened, you were playing. Oh, real, really? Yeah. Jack Murphy Stadium, the Mets won seven straight, 1987, 1988. Cespedes fouls off the slider, nothing in one. We, we used to we used to beat them up pretty bad, and they had a really good pitching staff. But the problem was they were all the same: Eric Shaw, Eddie Whitson, uh, Andy and, Hawkins. Uh, Andy Hawkins. They all were fastball sinker slider guys. So every night you had the same kind of approach against the pitcher. Cespedes lifts one to shallow right center, falling fast, and this one drops for a base hit. Cabrera read it well. He hits the third. Renfro's throw, and Cabrera slides in safely. Well, earlier in the game, Cespedes hit one to shallow right, and Renfro was able to come in and make a diving catch. This one found the Bermuda Triangle, and a great read by Cabrera to go first to third. Well, just off the end of the bat, so. The outfielders were fooled by that big swing. Cabrera takes the extra base. I thought Spangenberg lost the ball in the lights because I thought that Renfro was going to throw him out at third base. Watch Renfro's reaction. Spangenberg's reaction. Picked it up on the short hop. I didn't really get a good shot there. So the Mets have runners at first and third and nobody out. And a chance to get back in this game. Jay Bruce, the batter. Has walked in flight out. And he takes off the plate for ball one. Well, he put his club up to try to deep Cabrera, and he has a gun. Yeah, See, you're right. right. Spangenberg was bailing out. He lost it in the lights. He had a chance to, to tag him. Huh. Bruce lifts one to shallow left, and in comes Blash, tagging it third is Cabrera. Not very deep, and Cabrera's not going to try it. And Blash throws a. It on the fly to home plate, and that's the first down. Well, showed off his arm, but you know, not the smartest of throws. You want to try to hit the cutoff man. If the Mets were a little more alert, as soon as he threw that rainbow in there, if Cespedes was tagging up, he could have easily taken second. So no one away, and now Wilmer Flores, who has struck out and fly to left. First and third and one out. And Wilmer takes a fastball for a strike. Wilmer homeward in his first at bat in this series on Monday night against Clayton Richard. That's his only hit in the series so far. Lucas Duda waiting on deck. And that shot down the line of foul ball. Almost ate up the ball girl. Well, if anyone was going to make the catch, it was going to be her. I've been watching her in between innings. She is a real accomplished player with an unbelievable arm playing catch with the right fielder in between innings to get them loose. Well, she was smart to get out of the way yeah. of that one because that was a seed. Chasina ahead on Flores 0 and 2. And Wilmer just got a piece of that fastball. 95 from Chasina. That's the hardest pitch he's thrown all night.
see from above the wide stance of Flores. He gets it a little wider also with two strikes. Tries to take away that stride and put the ball in play. Oh, and two to Wilmer. Outside and low. Here's your Spectrum high speed pitch. Here it, here it is. Sound effects. Just seen, just threw his hardest pitch a moment ago. 95, Tyler Pill. 91. One and two to Flores, and it's inside. Wilmer getting the start at second base tonight. TJ Rivera has been bothered by a little elbow problem, and um, it started to hurt him even more last night. Remember that play where mm. Reyes flipped it to TJ, who was off the bag, and then had to do the reverse pivot and fire to first base to get an out? So uh, it, it flared up on him last night. And so that's why he's sitting and Flores is in at second base against the right hander which is not usually the case. Is that a Keith jersey that uh, young I think lady so. was on? Yes. By the way. You guys are awesome. What are you talking well, about? Well, your 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 little um, your little comedy routine on the Amazing Life came out today. <laughs> oh, it it is spectacular. <laughs> if you haven't seen it yet, go to SNY.TV and you'll you'll love every minute of it. I'm just happy you guys mentioned me because <laughs> you know you didn't have to, but I'm I'm glad that I, I made it into your your comedy routine. No, when, when you know how they did it is they really kind of blocked out some scenes that we were going to do and there weren't a lot of lines it kind of is just Keith and I improvising yeah. and kind of what we do here in the booth um, and tried to be as mean as we could to each other for the 30 second spot or a minute spot whatever it is. It's well see what happens when Keith and Ron get to the ballpark a bit too early. Let's just say it gets a little competitive on the season two premiere of the SNY.TV digital series The Amazing Life presented by Coca-Cola. Check it out now on SNY.TV slash Coca-Cola. So now we've done the official promo. But it's great. It really is great. Oh thank you. Three two to Wilmer and it's outside ball four. That's a great turn at bat for Wilmer. He was down in the count 0 and 2 and he works out the walk to fill the bases with one out. Let's go to the studio. Doug Williams has a game break brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. Doug. And Doug, did you mention that Horace Mann product, Harrison Bader, had three more hits today in wow. his second big league game? Only the second Horace Mann product ever to play in the big leagues. However, we know one who produces TV in the big leagues. <laughs> that would be our producer, Greg Picker. Proud Horace Mann grad. Padres go to the bullpen. Buddy Bauman coming in. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon. Mets threatening. Bases loaded in the sixth. Down 6 1. We'll be right back.
Buddy Bauman comes in for the second straight night for San Diego in to face Lucas Duda and he throws a fastball for a strike. Got those high stirrups looks nice. Bauman is that specialty lefty Andy Green the uh, uh, manager of the Padres didn't want to take any more chances. Takes the scene out. After 16 outs. And Bauman quickly in front of Duda and that foul ball caught. Torrens the catcher. And it's 0 and 2. Lucas singled to right and walked. See how spread out Torrens is. Mm. That that hurts. Oof. Look away. He hopped right up though. Catchers are tough. Toughest people in the game. Thank God for the protective cup. Cabrera at third, Cespedes at second, Flores at first with one out. And Duda pops one foul, and it come back out of play. That's with their opportunity here in the sixth inning. They've been down since the first inning of the game after Stephen Matz had another rough outing. Now uh, trying to fight their way back in. Duda down in the count 0 and 2. And Lucas cracks one out to right center, but overcomes Renfro, tagging at third Cabrera. Renfro makes the catch. Cabrera is not going to try to score. And that's the second out. So the second fly ball in the inning, not quite deep enough to get Cabrera home, and now there are two out. Uh, I don't think that's a bad play. I'm, people, I'm sure people at home say, how can he not tag up on that ball? Watch where this was, throw was going to be. It hit the cutoff man. It would have been one hop right to the catcher, and Cabrera would have been toast. Down five runs. So it's left to Reyes with the bases loaded in two out. Jose drove in the only med run with a base hit to center field in the second. And he takes low and in for ball one. Ray is hitting for a higher average as a right hand batter this year 253 from this side 219 from the left side. Base is loaded two out. And Bauman misses 2 and 0. Buddy Bauman was on the disabled list for the first three months of the season with shoulder issues just recently back. And in a big spot tonight. And he's behind Reyes, 3 0. Figure Jose has got to take at least one pitch. And he does, and it's a borderline strike. He thought he had ball four. Now Jose can get to hitting. Reyes with two grand slams in his career, including his first big league home run back in 2003. That was a grand slam in Southern California, batting right handed in Anaheim against Jared Washburn. <laughs> this one is inside ball four, and that'll force in a run. So Bauman walks Reyes with the bases loaded. That brings in Cabrera. That makes it six to two, and it brings the tying run to the plate with Rene Rivera coming up. And Andy Green is going to make another pitching change and bring in a right-hander to face Rivera. So Reyes has driven in both runs for the Mets tonight with a single and now a bases loaded walk. Double switch for the Padres. We'll clear it up for you when we come back.
changes to the Padres. Matt Caesar comes in to play left field. He'll bat ninth. And the veteran right hander Craig Stammen will pitch in bat fifth. Well, you Met fans have seen a lot of Craig Stammen when he was in the Washington National uniform over here with the Padres. His innings pitched his third of National League relievers. He's gone a couple innings and three innings on separate occasions. So he's like their long man. Base is loaded two out tying right at the plate Rene Rivera the former Padre 0 for 2 tonight and he takes a breaking ball for a strike nothing and one. Zespedes now at third Flores at second Reyes at first after drawing the bases loaded walk. Stammen's been out for the last few days with a bit of a hamstring issue. His first outing since Friday. And Renee takes outside. Rivera one for two in his career against Stammen. Hasn't had a hit with two outs and runners in scoring position in a couple of months. I'd say he's overdue. Tyler Pill is out on deck for the moment. And it's low and away, two and one to Renee. Buddy Bauman faced two batters in relief, got Duda on the short fly ball, but walked Reyes with the bases full. The run of the inning charged to Chassin, and he's responsible for two more. Two one coming. And Rene takes a strike two and two. That was his pitch. Yeah, it was. Just couldn't pull the trigger. The ball started on that outside corner, but then drifted right over the middle of the plate and couldn't pull the trigger. TJ Rivera with a bat in his hands. I think TJ always has a bat in his hands. <laughs> Two two coming. Hit toward the middle. Oh. Great diving stop by Cordoba, and he gets oh. up and throws him out. In a night life with great defensive plays by the San Diego Padres, Alan Cordoba makes the biggest one. Saves two runs with a brilliant stop, taking a base hit away from Rene Rivera and limiting the damage for the Padres in the sixth inning. The 21 year old rookie Cordoba laying out. Mets would have had two runs on that play for sure. Instead, it's merely the third out. What a defensive night for the Padres. They lead six to two.
tonight. But with the bases loaded, just the, the physical ability to dive and get that baseball. And I think even more importantly, the intelligence of this play. He knew Reyes was at first. He knew the catcher Rivera was running. He didn't even look at second. He threw straight to first base to get that out. And now he leads off against Tyler Pill in the home sixth inning. Cordova struck out in both his at bats against Steven Matz. Pill working his second inning of relief, worked a one, two, three, fifth. And Pill runs one in on Cordoba, and it's one and one. Defense matters, Gary. I'm just letting you know. Well, you know, we came on the air tonight talking about how defense aided the Mets in their 6 5 win last night, and it certainly did. But right from the first pitch of this game, as that's fouled off Cordoba's foot, the Padres have made four outstanding defensive plays, each one better than the one before. I mean, doesn't look at second base. He just had in mind the entire time to throw to first. Both the second baseman, Perella and Reyes, who wasn't sliding, had to duck or they're going to get hit in the face. And that's not even taken into account two fly balls that didn't score a run from third base because of the good arms of Blash and Renfro. Cordoba with a half swing stopped it in time oh. three and two. Oh. Rene Rivera just threw that ball to Tyler Pill who was looking at the first base umpire to see if they were going to call that check swing and he got his glove up just in time or it would have hit him right in the chest. Watch this he's looking at the first base umpire. Boom. Ooh. Good thing Rene didn't air it out. No. Three two coming. And a check swing tapper back to Pill. He handles this one with two hands. One out. Well, we've been talking about the Padre defense. It started on the first pitch of the game. Well, Blash with the slide, premature slide, but comes up with it. And then Hunter Renfro ends the first inning with a sliding catch. Conforto with a, a BB to center field that Margot caught. And of course, the last play that we've uh, shown. That the young Rule 5 draftee made like Ozzie Smith when he was in a Padres uniform. We talked about how the Padres radio booth hangs a star after every one of those plays. They've been giving those things out like candy tonight. <laughs> Luis Torrens has the biggest hit in this game for San Diego. The 21 year old Rule 5 pick hit a three run triple that barely missed being a grand slam against Mats in the third, his first career triple. And he goes after the slider from Pill, and it's one and one. Tony Gwynn Jr. is in that radio booth. And that's in for a strike, one and two. Matt Caesar came in on the double switch. He's batting ninth in the order. Caesar's on deck. One two from Pill and Torrens takes it outside two and two. That's bullpen has been perfect so far Goodell and Pill seven up seven down. And Torrens just got a piece of that to stay alive. Two two got him with a slider first strikeout for pill he's retired five in a row stuck on the train don't miss the game watch every SNY Mets game wherever you are on any device all season long with live streaming presented by Verizon just download the NBC Sports app or visit SNY.tv your home for live streaming coverage of every SNY Mets game. Here's Caesar.
Caesar had an infield hit last night in his only at bat. And he takes a strike one and two. Two and two. And Caesar watches the high curveball three and two. Matt Caesar, Lower Cape May Regional High School. All the way, all the way down there, right? Well, if it's, I mean, Cape May's all the way at the bottom of yeah. New Jersey, so Lower Cape May Regional High School, that's as far down as you can get. And Pill just missed ball four, and Caesar's on with the two out one. Verizon trivia question tonight who was the first player to hit a home run against the Mets. I, I mean this is your territory. Now the Cardinals scored 11 runs in the first ever game okay. against the Mets. I, I mean this, this is your I, uh, I I'm on the West Coast. I've already told you trivia. I do not pay attention to on the West Coast. Well, I mean, you weren't even alive in That's 1962. Right. I was. I was. Though. I was alive, but I wasn't following the Mets. I'll tell you that. What year were you born? 60. I'm a 60. 1960. You're only two years younger than me. Only two. I thought you were a lot younger. And, and, and the birthday's coming up too. We're all aging fast. Yeah, you're three weeks away from. Uh, I got the from birthday number 57. I got the day off again. Of course you do. <laughs> do you do that on purpose? I do it on purpose. Perella tops one down to Cabrera, and that retires the side. I don't want you guys making fun of me for three and a half hours. I'll have to get you one of those belated cakes. <laughs> six two Padres after six. Well, the Warman family is here tonight. Very nice. TJ Rivera pinch hits for the Mets as we start the seventh inning. TJ won for four last night. Eddie Warman, our associate producer, and his family fly ball out to right. 
That's his family. Eddie's sitting in the truck. Oh, okay. The family right. is enjoying the game. Well, I saw the family at the pool, and I went up to him, and I, I, I you know, I, I embellished a little bit, but I just said that Eddie is such a fantastic guy, so creative. He's amazing in our truck. He's one of the big reasons that we have uh, our show. And the fa and the family was like, oh boy, he has he has such nice things to say about you, Gary and Keith. And I was like, what? He hasn't been around enough. He doesn't know us that well. So you're saying that that he laid it on as thick as you did. Yes, yes. It's good for to take a strike. But he is great. He is great. He's great to have around. And he's in, he has the worst job in the history of jobs. After he works oh, yeah, for that four part. hours right. in the truck, he's got to drive us home to the hotel. He says it's the most anxious time of the day. For well, him. the thing about Eddie is, other than driving us from the ballpark to the hotel, yeah. he never drives. Oh, he, oh, that's he, right. He, he doesn't even have a car. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> and that's the guy we trust to drive well, us back well, to the well, hotel. What are we thinking? <laughs> it's all right. At least he usually gets there in a straight line, unlike some of his predecessors who. Well, oh, will not be named to that, that a little directional issue Hap happened here in Southern Cal. Too. Yes. Our tour through the John Wayne Airport. <laughs> the guy who worked for us for five years and Keith didn't know his name. <laughs> well I think that's probably true with Eddie too by the way. <laughs> One and two to Conforto and he struck him out. Stammen who got a little bit of a break when his shortstop bailed him out. In the sixth inning, has quickly disposed of the first two hitters in the seventh. Well, Stammen, you see the changeup, a grip here, and the ball just takes a right turn. Real good pitch by Stammen. We saw a lot of good pitching by Stammen when he was in a Nationals uniform. Very valuable uh, pitcher out of the pen. Now is Dribble Cabrera, who singled and scored for the Mets. In the sixth inning, when the Mets got a run but left him loaded on that great play by Cordoba. And a fastball strike. So they finally finished the game in Arlington, Texas. Final score Marlins 22, Rangers 10. Wow. The Marlins have played pretty well since Stanton went off. Remember, they lost a series, I think they got swept by the Phillies. And Stanton went off. You know, how can we lose against the worst team in baseball? That's what he called the Phillies. And uh, but they played very well, and he's hit very well since then. Ozuna drove in five runs. Derek Dietrich drove in five mm -hmm. runs tonight. And we mentioned earlier, D. Gordon hit his first home run of the year. Were they in Texas? In Texas. Okay. It's a lot, of, a lot of run scoring in Texas. Yeah, ball jumps out of there. Where uh, Degrom had his uh, reckoning. <laughs> Rangers play a return visit to City Field. Oh, right? they do. Yeah, they've got two games coming up. That's a lot of games against the American League starting this weekend in Seattle. Starting last weekend. Against Oakland, got the Yankees coming up, got the Rangers, right. Houston, go to Houston in September. Looks like a football score. Right. Two to ten. Got the two-point conversion. <laughs> Three and two to Cabrera with Cespedes on deck, and as Dribble smacks one out to center, Margot has room and goes back to get it. Side retired. Stammen throws a 1 2 3 top of the seventh. Stretch time in San Diego, 6 2 Padres.
Mark. It's only right that we will introduce the 2017 debut of Eddie Says. <laughs> uh, that's what Eddie has to say. <laughs> and he says it again. <laughs> now you're repeating yourself, Eddie. And and what's worse is that I sit in the front seat for uh, I get car sick, folks. So I sit in the front seat and I front seat drive, tell them where to go, where to make turns. I, I'm, just, I'm the worst. And uh, the poor Eddie he just takes it, drives us home. And as soon as we get out, that's probably the best part of his day. By the way, I want to make something very clear. Yeah. You know, the little caricature we have of Eddie looks so angry. Yeah. And he's just the opposite. I know. He's, he's always... the most non-angry person on earth. I mean, a phrase that used to be uh, when I was a kid, you don't hear from much uh, anymore. It's kind of happy-go-lucky. I wouldn't go quite, wouldn't quite go that far. <laughs> Here's Manuel Margot, who has a home run and a triple tonight. Facing Hansel Robles, who has had a couple of good outings in a row. And he throws a first pitch fastball by Margot. It's been uh, it's been a real struggle for Robles to get back on the beam. But he has shown some good signs his last couple of outings. The pitch. Still got that in his repertoire. He wound up the winning pitcher in back to back games against the A's over the last weekend. Scoreless inning each time. Kirby Yates up in the San Diego bullpen. Fact, talking about Robles as he throws the one-two to Margot, and he strikes him out with a slider. So Robles fans the first man to face him. You could probably win a lot of bets if you bet your friends after Jacob Degrom, which pitcher on the Mets staff has the most wins this year. Oh yeah. The yeah. answer is Hansel with his six relief win. Well, we had him on our TV this year, Phil Regan. So he is the vulture this year. It's Jacob. Here's Myers. And he fouls it back. Rom's next start will be Saturday afternoon in Seattle, where he'll try to win his ninth consecutive start, which no Met pitcher has done in a single season. Fly ball down the right field line, and that'll go foul. I'm going to be on my way to Milwaukee, but I'm going to uh, tape it and watch it when I get there. It's going to be a pretty formidable lineup he'll be facing in Seattle. The uh, the Mariners are an interesting team. They, they were right at 500 coming into the play today. Who's he going up against? Do you know? Uh, Gallardo pitches okay. Saturday. Well, Gallardo has is not probably, had a good year. Yeah, he's the easiest mark in that staff. And Myers pops it up. Due to settling under it. Two out. Let's check in with the studio. Doug Williams has another game break brought to you by the New York State Department of Health. Which is pretty funny, Doug, because here in San Diego, we've made reference several times oh, yeah. to the fact that several of the Padre hitters, most notably Will Myers, have been standing much closer to home plate than the on deck circle and nobody says boo about it. Uh, when I pitched I used to always tell the umpire if a guy was real close um, as a Swahe is right here I used to tell the umpire get him in, get him in the thing uh, get him in the uh, on deck circle. 
I think it's pretty funny though that Beltre pulled the on deck circle to him well, in order to comply. Considering the score, he wanted out. Well, how many hits did Beltre have tonight? He had three. He's so getting he's close. Now just four shy of, of 3,000. He's been a absolutely fantastic player since the age of 19. Third base is an underrepresented position in the Hall of Fame. That's right. He'll be uh, he'll be a surefire Hall of Fame. Robles falls behind Renfro three and one. Carlos Azuaje on deck to pinch hit with the pitcher spot due up next. Pudge Rodriguez. Rock Reigns, Tim Reigns, and Bagwell Jeff, Jeff are going. Bagwell. Yeah. Okay. Three and two, and um, Bill King gets the Frick Award right. posthumously, and our wonderful friend Claire Smith gets the Spink Award, and that's going to be that's going to be maybe for me the the nicest piece of the entire weekend. Yeah, me too. She is a um, Friend and uh, she's uh, as, as as great a writer as she is. She's an even better person. Mm -hmm. On the outside corner and Robles completes a solid seventh inning. One two three with a couple of strikeouts. Mets bullpen has been superb tonight. Now the Mets have to try and fight back as we go to the eighth down by four. Cologne and Mike Westoff will be in studio to break down all the expected position battles and discuss the new approach for the season to come. Maybe some more wins on Daily News Live presented by City tomorrow at 5 only on SNY. Stuff up Mets box score. We'll say Reyes has driven in both Mets runs with a single on a bases loaded walk. Mets have had just four hits tonight and they trail six to two as we go to the eighth. I was mentioning before the uh, the ball girl has a, a great arm in right field just throwing BBs to Hunter Renfro as he's she's warming him up. <laughs> if she doesn't already have a scholarship. I want to get she's her going to have one right Kirby Yates uh, pitching last night's ball game. He's been probably uh, other than the, the Brandon Maurer who was just traded probably their most valuable bullpen. Guys, you see his numbers nine walks, 50 punch outs. Came into face Cespedes last night and gave up an RBI double to him. And Cespedes taking all the way on the first pitch. It's a strike. Cespedes one for three tonight. He had two terrific defensive plays made against him a, a diving catch by Renfro and Wright, and a bullet one hopper that Spangenberg made a nice play on in the third. And then Cespedes hit a bloop that fell in his last time up. 
And Yates gets ahead 0 and 2. I have a bulletin for you from Dodger Stadium. Yes. Dodgers do not lead their game. They are trailing. What? Five to four to the Twins in the seven. Oh, that's. They, they got to cover. They're fine. They're Thirty. Kind of what they want them. Thirty-five and six in their last forty-one games. Mm. And Cespedes gets tied in a knot, and Yates wins the battle this time for the first out in the eighth. Funny looking pitch ball kind of like a backup slider that got Cespedes swinging. The um, didn't the Detroit Tigers in 84 started the season 35 and 5 35 and 5. So right now the Dodgers 35 and 6 over this last mm. stretch. And as Bruce is 0 for 2 in a walk tonight. Well, the Mets uh, Mets were there when the Dodgers were just cranking this thing up. That's right. That four-game sweep where the Dodgers had a million home runs. Dodgers have a chance with the record that they have right now to rival maybe the 2001 Mariners, right? But they win 116 that 116, year. 116, right? The Dodgers trying to go to 40 games over 500 tonight. Did the Indians win 116 and 154? No, they won 111. 111. The, okay. It was the, um, the the Cubs, I think. Cubs, okay. In uh, one of those early 20th century seasons. Ought eight or one of those seasons. Yeah, I think yeah. they won 116. Okay. And the Mariners tied that record. And Bruce goes fishing on the changeup. Two out and nobody on. Back to back strikeouts for Yates. Split finger. So you can see the grip. And a good one. They teach that on the islands? They they, they obviously must. <laughs> or at least he learned it here. Two out and nobody on now Flores and Wilmer unloads one to center field Mark go back to the warning track at the wall it's out of here. Wilmer Flores with his second home run in this series his 11th of the year to get the Mets a little closer. It's now six to three San Diego. Well Wilmer got the Mets started on Monday night with a home run against Clayton Richard. And he tries to keep them alive tonight with a home run this time against the right hander. Equal opportunity Wilmer against the lefty Richard and now against the righty Yates who tried to sneak a first pitch fastball by him and Wilmer was ready. This is a bomb. So the Mets with their first home run of the night, their 148th of the year, second behind the Brewers in the National League. Here's Duda, who's one for two in a walk. There's a Jeep pitch cast on that home run. Just put it on a tee. It's exactly where it end up, right there. Mm -hmm. Center. <laughs> one can hit, I'll tell you that. Quickly 0 and 2 on Duda. He batted with the bases loaded his last time up and a shallow fly to right. And fouls off the fastball. Well, before the Red Sox brought up Rafael Devers and then traded for Eduardo Nunez, I had heard some talk when I was in Boston doing a game that they were interested in Wilmer to play third base. Well, I don't know what Devers' defense is like. Nunez is more of an offensive yes. player. More like Flores, although Nunez can run a little better. Wilmer probably has more power than Nunez. And that ballpark is set up nicely, right? 
Well, you got to get them up in the air, though. Can't hit those line drives to left. Those are singles. That's right. <laughs> Provide dense. That's all. One two coming. And Duda takes a splitter outside. Two and two. Reyes would be next. Mets have been battling from behind all night. They were down two nothing after one, six to one after three. The bullpen has done a great job, four scoreless innings, and the Mets have nicked back to make it six to three. And Duda grounds one into the shift. Spangenberg, the third baseman, makes the play. That's a five-three putout to end the inning. Mets get closer on the Flores home run. 6-3 Padres in the eighth. Park in the park out in center field. They project this game on the back of the scoreboard. You can see a little bit of the action. You can also look at the Tony Gwynn statue out there. It's a beautiful statue. I mean, it captures this swing perfect. You go to some of these ballparks around baseball and you see these great statues of, of former players. Really a wonderful thing to see. Carlos Azuaje will be the pinch hitter leading off at the bottom of the eighth. Against Hansel Robles, who worked a 1 2 3 seventh with a couple of strikeouts. Azuaje started the first two games of this series at second base, went two for eight. And he loops this one to shallow center, and that's going to fall in for a base hit. A little parachute off the bat of Azuaje, and that is the first hit against the Mets bullpen after four hitless innings. Good pitch by Robles, not rewarded. Hansel loves sticking that hand up in the air to signify that it's a pop-up. I will let him know that most of the players on the field know if it's a pop-up or not. Tim Leary, one of my buddies, used to do that all the time. The problem with yeah, Robles yeah. isn't putting up his hand on a play like that yeah. where it is a pop-up. The problem is when a guy hits it 450 feet. And he points in the air. Well, it, it's it's just become part of a, a picadillo for him. It's one of the things he does, and uh, so it looks silly when when someone blasts one out of the ballpark. But there's tonight's pitchers, and you can see it's all good after uh, Stevens' tough start. Steven Matt's four starts now with an ERA over 14 over that span, and that will be. Uh, 
It'll be a big part of the conversation coming out of this game. The struggles of Steven Matz. Great for his first five starts and uh, not very good at all these last four. Spangenberg one for three tonight and he goes after the fastball and misses nothing in two. Drops to a knee. So Ruthie and clout by uh, Spangenberg it was his uh, Adrian Beltre tribute. I'd have an answer for it right now on this next pitch after that swing. Let's see what Robles does. He strikes him out with a fastball upstairs. Third strikeout for Robles and the tenth tonight for Met pitching. Let's answer our Verizon trivia question. First player with a home run against the Mets. I am told there were no home runs against the Mets in Shandy's. their first game. 11 home, 11 runs, but it was the Pirates and Bill Mazeroski who had the first home run against the Mets. I I had no idea. Now 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 we do. Not that impressed, but now we do. Well, it wasn't the biggest home run Mazeroski <laughs> ever hit, but you know, but it does play a role in Mets history. Now you know who hit the first home run for the Mets. In their history, I do because uh, I, I heard you talking to Dennis about it, so I, I I caught it. The big man, the best man, one of the best managers ever, right? Gil Hodges, first home run in Mets history. Gil hit four home runs in a game. Yes, as a Dodger, not as a Met. Yeah. The most important first. From the April of 1962, yeah. was the first winning pitcher because they lost their first nine <laughs> oh. before Jay Hook got oh, the first okay. win in Mets history. I'll tell you, another, another 10 years in this job, I'll have it down pat. And Robles throws the fastball by Cordoba, and it's one and two. Gordon was 0 for 3 at the plate, but has made the most important play of the night. Mets have the bases loaded in the sixth inning with two out. Well, BB headed toward the middle off the bat of Rene Rivera, and Cordoba just made an otherworldly play to keep it on the infield, throw out Rivera, and save at least two runs. The highlight of a, a night of dis defensive yeah. wizardry on the part of the Padres. This Cordoba will see him that play. On every channel, sports channel, all night long. Good for him. Well, the youth movement for the Padres has been big tonight. Margot with a home run and a triple, 22 years old. Cordoba, that great play, 21 years old. Luis Torrens, the three run triple, 21 years old. Mm. Strike three called, and that's the fourth strikeout for Robles. So Hansel continues to impress, and there are two out. And it's all about fastball command. Every fastball he has thrown, seemingly against the right handed hitters, has been right there, right on the corner. So two out and now it's Torrens three run triple that barely missed being a grand slam back in the third inning. Padres have their all star Brad Hand getting ready in the bullpen. So he's going to close. Uh, a lot of people thought he was going to be the first person traded. Because he's had quite a year. Well, the Padres traded three pitchers earlier this week, including a couple of relievers to Kansas City. But they still are marketing hand, although a lot of people feel as though they're asking for a little too much, and that's why he's still here. Mm, okay. Well, he's a left-handed specialty specialist with a with a great slider. One and two to Torrens. I mean, Brad Hand is a great story. A guy who basically was on the scrap heap yeah. and uh, has 
not only resurrected his career but brought it to an entirely new level pitching for San Diego this year. This has always seemed to be a franchise where relievers get well. Yes. And if he continues to pitch this way, he's got an opportunity when you look at the contracts that Mike Dunn got and Brent Cecil and others um, to hit a good payday. Final game of this series tomorrow starts an hour earlier at 9 o'clock Eastern, so our pregame coverage begins at 8 o'clock Eastern. Chris Flexen makes his big league debut on the mound. Luis Perdomo pitches for the Padres. Two two to Torrens and he hits one toward right center field overcomes Conforto to get it and that retires the side so two scoreless innings for Hansa Robles Metz will face Brad hand in the ninth trying to rally trailing six to three. All right, guys. Jose Reyes leads off the ninth against Brad Hand. Carlos Asuaje, who pinches, stays in the game at second base. Jose well, Hand's numbers: 66 punchouts in 51 innings. He's throwing his breaking ball more than he ever has. Mets saw him a lot when he was with the Marlins. Reyes three for eight against Hand, and he takes a fastball for a strike. Brad Hand spent five middling years. With the Marlins they used him as a starter at times they used him as a reliever he never found much success they let him go on waivers at the beginning of last season the Padres picked him up and he pitched in 82 games for them last year and pitched well and he's been even better this year and he gets that slider in for a strike that's got some wicked break to it one and two see the grip on the side of the baseball. And he gets it spinning and then it breaks late. So it's almost like it doesn't start breaking until it gets about 10 feet from the hitter. And that one gets away. Did Reyes swing? He's not running to first base. Torrens ran after it. First base umpire Vic Carapazzo said no, it was not a swing, but that was impressive by. Torrens, the hustle to get to that baseball because he wasn't sure. Well, he should have run after it, which he did. Reyes also should have run to first just in case. Fortunate that they did not call that a swing. Good hustle, kid. 
Rene Rivera on deck. Then the pitcher spot for the Mets in the ninth. Reyes has driven in both Met runs tonight, or the two of the three Met runs tonight. And he lifts this one deep to center field, but it's playable for Margot. And he goes back to get it one out. Coming up tonight on Geico Sports Night after the postgame show, all the baseball highlights. Chris Flexen getting ready for his debut tomorrow. He's here tonight. And football news as well coming up on Geico Sports Night after the postgame. Well, here's Rivera. This game uh, took a sharp turn in the sixth inning. Mets were down six to two and threatening. Rivera at the plate as the tying run with the bases loaded. Get a shot up the middle. Cordoba made a great play to rob him, and the Padres have uh, been in control since then. Mm. Renee is 0 for 3 tonight, 0 for his last 14. Mm. And he grounds one for Cordoba. Much easier play this time, and they're two out. So the Mets are down to their final out of the night. And now Travis Darno will come up to pinch hit. You know, I'm looking up and down the uh, the pitcher batter matchups for the Mets against hand, and they've got great numbers yeah. top to bottom against it, but they're all irrelevant yeah, now. Yeah, they are. Because he's a different guy. It's amazing how a pitcher can refine one pitch and turn his entire career around. Well, when you are given some of the out of town scores, you see who's back in first place for the first time in a long time. You mean the Chicago Cubs? Yes, I mean the Chicago Cubs. They've won 10 of 12 after beating the White Sox tonight behind Jake Arrieta. And with the Brewers' loss, it does indeed put the Cubs in first. I've always thought that Brad Ham, when I wa used to watch him pitch, I always felt that he had different arm speed on his breaking ball and his fastball. He no longer has that anymore. Maybe that's the big difference. And the slider in for a strike. 0 oh 2 to Darno, and now the Mets are down to their final strike. Has to move his feet. Does a push up and gets back up. It's like he was at boot camp. <laughs> Paris Apro Island. Apropos here in San Diego. One two from hand, and the slider strikes him out, and that'll do it. Brad Hand comes in for a 1 2 3 ninth to save it. Steven Matz gives up six runs in the first three innings. And although the Mets bullpen did a great job for the next five, the Padres played some wonderful defense and handed the Mets just their second loss in their last eight games as San Diego wins it 6 to 3. Well, it's the difference for Brad Hand is the slider. And uh, it's just nasty and it broke down and in on Darnell, and he didn't have a chance as the. Padres get the third game of this series uh, with a early explosion against Stephen Matz. There's your game summary brought to you by Jeep. Matz with an ERA over his last four starts over 14. Just seen 